I'm here with Lawn Fawn Interactive Cards. Today we're going to be looking at the reveal wheel. What is a reveal wheel? Well, it's this... <laughs> Well, it's this little turny thing right here. Um, so it changes scenes and characters, all kinds of things. Very easy to put together, but you do need to know the steps. So I'm going to take you through those steps. We're going to finish out this card because I ha think it has some really fun um, parts that you would like to put into your other cards. And I will also make sure to show you putting together this reveal wheel but this card is going to be the next video so this card has a lot of rainbow elements and the next one is going to be coordinating those rainbow colors so that you can create really cool rainbow effect cards it will also have a freebie so make sure you hit the notifications and the subscribe and like button and that way you'll know when that next video is out so i will see you over here we'll work on the reveal wheel okay so here's what the card looks like finished and you see how i can turn with my finger there and the little picture at the top changes this is called a reveal wheel and this is what we're going to work on putting together so that you can create some interactive cards for yourself Okay, here are the pieces that we're gonna start with. This piece right here, we need to add one other thing and we're gonna use it from our set. So this is from Wheelie Great Day and this is made specifically to fit our cute little baskets on the Ferris wheel. So you have lots of these options that you can buy. The basic kit comes with that background, the scalloped wheel, and the little round um, turny thing that's going to be the mechanism. This is the basket if you want to cut it out to be on front. I'm not going to use that today. See how it goes right here if you wanted to make a whole basket that goes over this area. To me, it's a little larger than the other ones, so I just liked leaving it blank and having that open right there. You see how that reveal wheel little piece fits in the hole here? It's like a little puzzle. And so we're going to leave that there and then I'm going to show you these templates. Now these are nice to have but they're not essential, especially if you're on a budget. You can make this the way that you want to. These are just pieces, they're like stencils. And they're going to show us where to stamp our little images. You can figure that out with a ruler. It gives you an option here of five or four, which we can draw that and figure it out on these templates just fine. But it is nice if you've got that extra few dollars and you want to spend it on these it does make it a little easier to get your stamped images in the right area before we get to cut any anything you need to make sure this little piece is fitting right here all cutting surfaces are facing a specific direction so make sure that you put this where the cutting side of it is going to cut through the paper so I've really got this kind of flipped over where this is the back and I'm adding my piece of tape there some people leave a piece of tape in this so that they can use it for all different re reveal wheels which is perfectly fine but I'm just using some scotch tape and I'm going to tear off the excess so it doesn't get stuck to my paper and we'll cut out a piece I'm cutting mine out of two different pieces just for demonstration sake so you'll be able to see the difference in the colors. Generally I would cut all of this out of white just so that it all coordinates and because I'm going to do some ink blending on the front. So the first piece here is this scalloped circle. You see how it has the little hole in the middle? I'm going to show you how to use that. But you want those scallops to face up on your card so you can see that pretty detail. And I'm showing you with a pointer there are these natural sections that aren't in the embossed line and they're basically cutting this into a pie. So like I said if you don't have those stencils you can use a pencil and do those little non-embossed areas make yourself a little pie piece and you can stamp um, that very easily. So this is going to go behind like I said the scallops and the embossing facing up. Next we have this little disc and so this little disc is going to fit on the back of this scalloped piece. That little circle is going to be attached to the back of your card, but before we can do anything, we have to put it together. So you need to get a small brad. It doesn't really matter what color. I would keep it as small as possible just so that it doesn't affect the um, height of your card too much. Um, and then we're going to line these holes up. Once I have them lined up, I'm going to put the brad, the button part of the brad is going to be on the back, and then the open part is on the front. So this is the back. It'll be touching the back of the card. This other part is the front. You want to open up those little wings like that, and then make sure if you hold this in the center that everything spins well. So I'm holding on the brad and making sure that it spins because that's what we're going to need it to do. And it does and does a really good job, so we're ready to move to the next stage. 
Next, you are gonna need foam squares, and these would, a fourth of an inch fits the best, and I had two options, so I'm just grabbing these because I need to use them and get them gone. So, where we're gonna put our foam squares are on the back of this. So remember, the ball or pearl part of that brad is on the back. I don't want this to touch my brad because I want everything to stick very well, but I wanna put them around and I'm gonna put four around the middle brad. Now set this piece aside and I'm gonna show you the size to cut your background from and we'll get it all together. So I cut my background piece out of white just because I had some extra paper here. It doesn't really matter because like I said, this is for demonstration. And I cut it 3.75 inches by five inches. That's the exact size of this other one. Or you can just take a piece of paper and trim it right behind it. You don't have to make the measurements. Now I need to figure out how I'm gonna line these up and draw a little bit on the back of my page to make sure I've got my window and everything centered the way that you want it. But you can't see any of the embossed lines and you've got enough area over here to turn, then flip it over carefully, and we're gonna draw some lines so we know where the center of this is. I grabbed a T ruler just so I could see the exact center, and I'm gonna make a couple of marks for myself just to help me line this up on the background as well. Okay, so I'm gonna tape this down, and I removed the little self-adhesive part of those foam squares so they're gonna stick when I put these together. I grabbed my background, and I'm gonna line these two up and press firmly so those foam squares will stay attached to the back of this card. Okay, and I'm gonna flip it so you can see. So we've got the foam tape attached to the back. The front is a tape just with that, is attached just with that tape. So I'm gonna carefully undo the tape and I'm gonna pull off the front panel so we can do some stamping. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tweezers. I'm gonna bend these pieces of the brad up so that they're straight. And then I'm gonna pull off my scalloped circle because it is not attached with any adhesive, just the brad. Do this carefully so you don't rip the back off. And now you see I have that disc with its foam tape attached to the background. Now this is where these little stencils come in handy. You can just draw around them. Like I said, I could do four or I could do five little characters. I've decided I'm gonna do four. Now you don't have to draw this with pencil marks. You could just leave it taped down and take a stamp block and stamp in each of these. But I like to draw the little um, lines and then I'll just erase them later. It just helps me see it a little bit better and also make sure that I get my stamping. If I want to stamp twice or something like that with my image, I can do that. Now I'm just gonna take a stamp block and I'm gonna stamp these little images in those areas and erase the lines. You could also do it this way if you didn't have the stencils where you just go through the opening there. Just be careful and you'll see that you get it right in the middle and it works fine that way as well. Now let me show you how, how we're gonna get this back together. So you've got those little brads, just hold them together and put this other piece through the hole and then we'll spread those little brad wings out again. Now all that's left to do is to put the front piece on. So you're gonna need some foam tape to pop it up so that that moves freely and you don't want your wheel to run into your foam tape. I'm putting very little on this one because this is just one to show you how it works and then I'll show you about how much foam tape I used on my actual card. So here's what I did on the actual card. I just went all around and really covered this area with foam tape. And the reason I'm using these foam squares is because they're the same height as what I used on the back of these. So I'm just using them all around. You could do strips, whatever you want to. Just make sure it's not touch touching the wheel so that it will still spin. Okay, you can see I really covered them. And then I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna show you how I made the backgrounds. So you can see how I put together the bright blue card. I just wanna show you a couple quick things on that just to help you figure it out. I'm measuring right now this um, Ferris wheel so that I know where the sky starts and the pavement begins and I can ink blend those two areas. So I used some masking tape to create um, a mask for where the pavement's gonna be. I also used some post-it notes. And then I'm gonna swipe this Catherine Pooler ink. If you haven't ever done this, this pink, this ink is made to go straight to paper. And these little minis are nice just to swipe across. So I'm gonna try to get that line as even as I can. I don't care if it's super messy because we're gonna ink blend over it as well. The first color is It's a Boy. The second, second one is called Something Borrowed and the last one is suede shoes. Next, I sprayed just a little water on there because this ink is reactive to water, and I pressed down the suede shoes and added a little water to create some more splatter. 
So once I've splattered this and let it dry, I'm going to add just a little white acrylic splatter and then we're going to do use the new cloudy stencil to create some really cool fluffy clouds. And I'm just showing you this dark blue background because it's a little different than the other one. And it's probably something you haven't tried before with these um, Catherine Pooler inks. So this is going to go on white. This is all to new embossing paste. So we're creating some white fluffy clouds. But with this Catherine Pooler ink, these clouds are going to absorb a little bit of that color. And it's really quite cool because the color is three different tones. And so it's really changing our clouds as well. So I'm going to get this on and then I'll show you what it looks like before everything dries. How cool these clouds look once they're dry. See how they're different colors? I just think that looks so cool. So it's a really fun way to do your back. Background. The last thing I'm going to do is create color matching cardstock with suede shoes. I'm going to use that same method of ink swiping directly from the ink pad and I'm going to create some cardstock that matches this card perfectly. So just little extra details that are super nice. Make sure that you stick around and hit the like, subscribe, and notification button so that you'll be able to see the video next week where we're going to talk about rainbow color combinations from this fun card. I hope that you had fun and that you learned a lot. I'm going to pop of a video I think you'll really love and I hope that you have a great week. Make sure if you need any of these products you go through the links in the description. See you soon. Bye!